This is a ship's biscuit. It's hardtack. It's pure condensed nutrition. If you take a family road trip today, maybe 500 miles, you definitely pack clothing, maybe some recreational gear, a laptop. You don't need to worry about food. You can travel and stop any number of times along the way. Gas stations, grocery stores, fast food restaurants, they are everywhere when we travel today. If you're traveling in the 18th century, that is never true. You have to bring your food along with you. You never know when you might be able to find food or not. If you're a sailor on the high seas, there is no place to get food. You have to bring along every bit that you need. And it needs to be able to last through multiple different kinds of temperatures, in different situations. It needs to be condensed. It needs to be nutritious. I'm amazed by the resourcefulness of our forefathers in creating ship's biscuits. They check off all the difficulties on this list. I even have a ship's biscuit here that is 10 years old and it's still probably edible. I'm gonna try this at the end of the episode. So what is a ship's biscuit? How is it made? Ship's biscuits are so very, very simple. They are an unleavened bread. We just take two or three ingredients. You just need flour, you need a little bit of water, and maybe sometimes salt. You make a very, very stiff dough, and you form it into these little biscuit shapes, and they're baked. And they're baked by the baker at a fairly low temperature and for a very long time. What we're trying to achieve here is a hardened disc of baked dough with almost no moisture in it. Moisture is the enemy of a ship's biscuit. It will cause it to get moldy. It will also attract insects. If this is dry, desiccated, there's nothing here for bugs to eat, and it just doesn't go bad. So it's easy to imagine a ship's voyage and on board ship are, are barrels and barrels of ship's biscuits. How are they going to eat these? Sailors know when they sign up that this is the bread they're gonna get each and every day. In fact, rations for a sailor every day includes a pound of bread. So they may get six, seven, eight ship's biscuits depending on how big they are. There are accounts where sailors don't even like soft bread. After they're used to eating these for a long period of time, they think the soft bread is actually gonna be bad for them. All that air in the bread will make their stomach not digest properly. And so this is what they crave each and every day. But it's not just sailors that have to endure ship's biscuits each and every day. Soldiers are also dealing with ship's biscuits constantly. 18th century soldiers are in situations where ship's biscuits are part of their ration, especially as a substitute, and maybe not an everyday thing. Joseph Plum Martin during the Revolutionary War talks about coming up to a situation where they didn't have regular bread to give out, and so they had opened up a cask of ship's bread and say, take as much as you want. So each soldier stuffed all these ship's biscuits into their shirts and into their pockets as much as they could. As we move westward toward the Mississippi, frontiersmen, explorers, and settlers are using ship's biscuits as part of their provision. They are surviving on this very same thing. We also see it as a commodity used to trade with the Native Americans. Later on in the 19th century, during the Civil War, soldiers had to deal with ship's biscuit the same way they did earlier, but they generally referred to it as hard bread, bread, or hardtack. If you read in the diaries, you don't see the word hardtack showing up very often. I think they just plain referred to it as bread, and if they got regular bread like we know it today, they would say something special in the diary like, I got soft bread today. Through our time period where ship's biscuits become more and more important, the making of them changes. So early on, individual bakers are making ship's biscuits. Later on in the 18th century, it becomes more industrialized and they set up bakeries right close to the ship ports. There are five or six people working on the making of ship's biscuits and they might have nine ovens going and teams of men making these biscuits. It turns out that they need thousands and thousands thousands of them for maybe just an individual ship. So the demand is very, very great. And by the time we get into the 19th century, it's totally industrialized and machines are making them from start to finish. 
you'll probably say, John, is this really nutritional? Now, think about the flour in the 18th century versus flour today. These biscuits were made with the least expensive flour. Whole wheat flour, sometimes other kinds of inexpensive flours thrown in, in fact, probably much more nutritional than we can imagine. This was just meant to get you through the day. This was survival food, not trying to give you this complete wonderful nutrition that we are always thinking of today. People in the 18th century didn't have those same kinds of nutritional concepts. If we look at cookbooks in the 18th century, we will not find a recipe for ship's biscuits. They're made by the baker. They're not made in a house. And the bakers generally hand these processes down. They don't write them out. So they'll give it to your apprentice to make, and he'll make a thousand ship's biscuits or whatever. It's also an industrial process. We do get descriptions of this, especially as the process gets more and more mechanized, and we get descriptions of the archaic method of making ship's biscuits. I've got a couple of pounds of whole wheat flour, and we're gonna mix that with just enough water to make a nice stiff dough. It's gonna take a little bit to get this incorporated properly. Mix it in a bowl, it makes it a little bit easier. I really wanna make sure this dough ball is complete. It doesn't have cracks in it, any folds, where there is any unincorporated flour, because at those points, the dried biscuit will fall apart. It will crack and break, and we don't want that. So we want this to be a nice, solid biscuit. If they fall apart in root, we haven't done what we needed to do. I'm gonna try a couple of different techniques here kneading. One of them is to use a rolling pin as a break to really work this dough over and get it to be very, very smooth. And once that's done, we can start to rip it up into those larger than egg size pieces. After those pieces are made, we can form our little biscuit shapes. We're looking for a hockey puck kind of style here they are turning out very, very consistently. Since this isn't an industrial kind of situation, I'm not selling these ship's biscuits. They can vary in size a little bit. That's okay, especially for personal use. As we're forming up the biscuits, realize that these are not gonna grow as they bake. If anything, they'll shrink just a little bit. So we're forming these biscuits up almost exactly the size that we want them to be when we use them. We're poking holes consistently across our biscuits and all the way to the bottom. And we're doing that so that it releases the moisture throughout the entire biscuit as it's baking, especially if they bake fairly rapidly, because what will happen is steam builds up in the inside of the biscuit and it will just sort of pop the top and create holes and gaps in our biscuit. In one sense, that's exactly what we want because we want it to be easier to eat. But in the case of a ship's biscuit where we want it to stay together until we're ready to eat it, we don't want any air gaps, we don't want any holes. And so we poke these holes and the steam will come out through those instead of puffing it up. I've baked many batches of these and I've used several different techniques trying to find the best way. These take at least two bakes, if not three or four, or you can do one very long bake at a low temperature. That's probably the best way to do it. We don't want that steam to build up. So if we bake them very, very slowly, that steam has a chance to get out of the biscuit without it breaking and cracking. So I would say the best way to do it is about 250 degrees for three or four hours. You might need to bake them for a while and then lower that temperature. Maybe bake them for an hour at 250 degrees, lower that temperature. I've even baked them overnight at just kind of the warm temperature in a modern oven. Ship's biscuits show up in multiple different literary references. This is from Swift's family, Robinson. We refreshed ourselves with wine and biscuit, which we found in some of the casks. Whenever we have bread or biscuits coming out of a barrel, we know they are ship's biscuits. The trick with ship's biscuits is you can't just eat them. You will break your teeth. So we don't want to eat that. This is our 10 year old ship's biscuit. I'll try this last. We have our ship's biscuits that we just made and we can use them in Lobscouse. So you can check that episode out where we just ate them in the Sailor's Feast. We also have broken up a little bit of ship's biscuit and soaked it in wine. And 
Here we're using it like cereal. So I've broken up the ship's biscuit by pounding it and then pouring it into hot chocolate. And that's another popular drink from the, from the time period. Let's start with this chocolate cereal. Probably needs to soak a little bit longer, but reminds me of cocoa wheats. It's actually really good. It's got a, a nice little bit of tooth and a, and a wonderful chocolate flavor. The biscuit soaked in wine, I'm kind of surprised. You can see how soft it is at this point. It's only soaked about 10 or 15 minutes. This is a little bit of Madeira, very common 18th century wine. And very nice and soft, eats easily. And this could be dessert. So it's a, a bit of a dessert wine. You could soak this in water or in grog. Here's the big trouble, right? This ship's biscuit is over 10 years old. It's got all these extra little holes in it. I didn't make all these holes. Some of these holes are made by bugs, um, which is a common problem with ship's biscuits. And this one is a pretty hard one. It has been around this long, kind of a little overcooked, um, but let's break this, see what the inside is like. There we go. There's our ship's biscuit on the inside. There's some bugs in there, some little white uh, larva, which is a common problem in the 18th century. Sailors, they would tap the biscuits on the table to knock the bugs out uh, or eat them in the dark because they didn't want to know what they were eating. But uh, let me see if I can get a little, little bit of it here. tastes almost exactly like the brand new ship's biscuit. Still, after 10 or 12 years, it's just as edible as it was before. Maybe a little added protein.